Let's take a look at how to create custom papers and flow maps in Corel Painter. Down in the bottom of the Papers panel is a button called Make Paper. This brings up a tool that can generate patterns to be used as papers. Currently, the halftone pattern is selected, which creates a series of dots. We can decrease the spacing to make finer dots, or increase the spacing to make larger dots. And we can change the angle of the pattern as well. Let's change the pattern to New Halftone. This produces dots that are round rather than square. There are also patterns that can create lines, diamonds, squares, circles, ellipses, and triangles. Triangles creates a quilted looking pattern. I think I'll use this as my custom paper. I'll save this as quilted. And now that paper appears in whichever papers library was selected. I want that paper to be in the AR papers library. If I paint with the quilted paper enabled, you can see that triangular pattern appears on my canvas. Because this is a flat brush, none of the transparency in the paper will be visible in the stroke. If I switch to my glazing chalk brush, then I'll be able to see the full transparency of the paper texture more clearly. If I want to modify this paper a bit, I can change the angle, scale, contrast, and brightness. Let's take a look at another way to create a custom paper. I'll open the Patterns panel, and I'll click on the button called Make Fractal Pattern in the bottom left. This is another tool that can generate patterns. In the preview, you can see that we are getting a cloudy fractal pattern. I'll set all of the properties except thinness to 0%, and then let's start by adjusting the feature size, which is going to determine the number of features in the image. As we start to increase the feature size, you can see that the blobs being generated start to become more prominent until you can see very distinct black and white blobs. If we set the feature size lower, then the blobs are so fine that they become just a grainy pattern. The power property controls the amount of definition in the pattern. You could think of it as the zoom level of the pattern. When power is low, you are zoomed in closely. When power is high, you are zoomed out really far. You can modify the edges of the features using softness. As we start to increase this, we'll begin to see that it makes everything blurrier. We can decrease the thinness to stretch out the pattern, and we can rotate the angle of the pattern. I'll choose settings that look like water ripples. Next, we can choose the size of the paper. This will determine how detailed the paper will be. At a minimum, you'd probably want to set it around 512 pixels. If the paper you are creating has lots of fine details, you'll want to set that higher. This is a pretty detailed paper, so I'm going to set it to 2048. You also have an option to change the channel. You'll want to leave this set to height as luminance to make it suitable as a paper. I'll click on OK, and now we've generated a pattern. All that's left is to select all and choose Capture Paper from the Papers panel. I'll name the paper Ripples, and I'll need to choose a crossfade value. This will control how the edges of the paper fade into each other to create a repeating pattern. It's fine to leave crossfade at its default of 16 pixels, but if you want to, you can experiment with other values. I won't bother saving this paper, because I already have something similar in my library. I'll press Control tab to go back to my demonstration canvas. I'll select the ripples paper and paint with it. As you can see, this paper creates a nice rippling water effect. I don't want to keep this quilted paper, so I'll delete it. So far, we've explored two different ways to generate paper textures, but we can also create papers by painting on the canvas or by converting a photograph to grayscale. To create a custom paper, I'll start by creating a canvas that is 512 by 512 pixels. You can use any canvas size you like, but it has to be square so that it can tile properly. Because a paper repeats, it does not need to be very large the exception being papers with high detail. I'll combine some of the pre-existing papers on this canvas to create a new paper texture. Papers can only be in grayscale, so you can only paint with black, white, and gray. Although it varies depending on the brush you're painting with, in this case, the black areas of the paper are where the brush media will deposit the most. As you can see, when I paint on the canvas, my strokes resemble the paper texture, but with more contrast. You can paint directly onto the canvas layer, or you can paint on separate layers, so long as you are prepared to merge everything down to the canvas when you are ready to capture the paper. Because a paper tiles automatically, the results are going to look best if you are able to create a seamless pattern. 
You can do this by opening the Patterns panel, and from the Options menu, choosing Define Pattern. When Define Pattern is activated, painting near the edge of the canvas will mirror the strokes to create a seamless pattern. I'll fill the canvas with this texture by painting over the entire surface. Then I'll reduce the scale of the paper in the Papers panel, and add another layer of smaller texture. I can also paint with white to create negative space. I can use this as an eraser to remove some of the texture. I can also use shades of gray to create areas of texture that interact more or less with the brush media. Keep in mind that you can also modify the contrast and brightness of the paper after it has been created using the paper properties. Let's say this is going to be our paper. I'll choose Save As. And I'll first save this as a painter riff to preserve this composition in case I want to reuse it or modify it later. Now let's make this into a paper. I'll select the paper in my AR Papers category so that my new paper goes there. Be sure all of your layers are merged to the canvas. And then perform a Select All command. Then from the bottom of the Papers panel, click on the button to capture paper. I'll name this paper Bumpy Scales. Set the crossfade to zero because we created a pattern that is seamless, then click on OK. I'll switch back to a blank canvas that is 1920 by 1080 pixels. I'll select my new paper, and I'll choose the Real Fat Chalk Brush. When I paint on the canvas, you can see my custom paper is revealed in the strokes. I can change the paper properties to make the pattern larger or smaller. However, if I scale the paper too large, the pixels will become jagged. If this bothers you, just remake your paper using a larger canvas size. I'll switch to my custom brush called Glazing Chalk, and now when I paint, the paper is inverted and I get a different look for my strokes. I can invert the paper if I want to reverse it. I can also soften or sharpen the appearance of the paper using the contrast and brightness sliders, though this tends to work better on papers with a wider range of gray values. You can use a photograph to create a paper as well. I'll create a new canvas that is 2000 by 2000 pixels, and I'll place in a photo called Bamboo Wall. I'll bring it in at 75% and make sure it fills the canvas. Now I just need to convert it to grayscale. I can do that in a number of ways, depending on the effect that I want. I can go to Effects, Tonal Control, Adjust Colors to desaturate the image. I can choose Effects, Surface Control, Express Texture to convert the image to only black and white pixels. The paper you have selected will also be superimposed over the texture. Or I can choose Effects, Surface Control, Woodcut, and Output to Black only, or add in some gray values. Then to make this into a paper, you'll just need to merge the layers with the canvas, select all, and capture paper as we looked at earlier. You'll probably need to use some crossfade to blend the edges when the tile repeats. That ought to give you a good idea of how you can create your own custom papers to get all kinds of really cool effects in your brush strokes. If I want to export this paper to back it up, I will have to export the entire paper library. You can do this from the Manage Paper Libraries menu. For this reason, if you're creating custom papers, it might make sense to put them in your own custom library. Let's create a custom flow map by capturing it. I'll create a new document that is 1000 by 1000 pixels. You can follow the same principles as capturing a paper. If you want a seamless pattern, you'll want to enable define pattern mode as well. Now that I have a canvas to paint on, I want to keep in mind that the light and dark features in the pattern are what's going to inhibit or channel the flow of the paint. I'll paint some splatters of ink to create a flow map with vertical drips. First, I will save my working copy by going to save as, and saving it as Drips Flow Map. I'll save this as a painter riff so I can preserve that liquid ink layer. I'll select a flow map in my custom library to set that as my destination. And now to turn this into a flow map, I'll need to drop all layers, select all, then click the button at the bottom of the flow maps panel to capture a flow map. I'll name it Drips AR. Because I created a seamless pattern, I don't need to add any crossfade. So I'll click on OK to create the flow map. Then I'll press Control tab to go back to my blank canvas, and let's choose that flow map to activate it. I'll select my watercolor runny brush, and you can see that paint flows as if it's dripping on the canvas. 
If I change my flow map to something else, the flow pattern changes and does not look as drippy. Just like with the paper libraries, you'll want to export flow map libraries to back them up. You can do that from the Manage Library button in the bottom left of the flow maps panel. You can also create new flow maps by converting the papers into flow maps, and likewise it is possible to create a paper from a flow map. 